and equally important, you didn't have the fuel they'd need. High octane, high road octane, not free gasoline. Now the metals industry developed and they kept improving the alloys that were needed. Look at the difference between this camshaft and the one in your 1956 car. Now the industry solved the tooling problem. We've got the cooling systems now. We've got the lubricating systems, the right lubricants, multi-grade oils like Sinclair Triple X Extra Duty. And as the octane requirement of the engines we design has gone up, the fuels the petroleum industry develops have paced us. The introduction of Power X in 1953 was a giant step toward the ideal automobile engine fuel. But today, we're in a spot a lot like the one we were in back before the war with this engine. We can design a better engine than this. We've done it on paper. But one of the oldest problems in engine and fuel research stands in the way of actually putting them in today's cars. Combustion chamber deposit buildup. It's been the greatest robber of new car performance since passenger cars began. You probably heard it called carbon in the engine. Well, it's a little more than that. The accumulation of solid deposits includes not only carbon, but dust from the atmosphere, varnish, and metallic substance. Now the deposited layers naturally make the space inside the combustion chamber smaller. And as this space gets smaller, the pressures get greater and greater. Just as if the engine had been originally designed for higher compression performance. The trouble is, it now requires a higher octane fuel than it was designed to use. Actually, with old engines like this, the deposit buildup wasn't nearly as vital as it is today. With such large combustion chambers, even quite a bit of deposit buildup didn't make much change in the compression ratio. But today, we have a lot less leeway. The combustion chamber is much smaller to begin with. The same deposit takes up much more of the room in the chamber. And while combustion chamber deposit is not a new problem, it's a much more critical one now. So one of your customers buys the car with this engine. Say he's told it delivers peak performance with regular grade octane gasoline. He drives it a few thousand miles with those deposits building up. Of course, they don't build up forever. They reach the point where no more buildup takes place. We call that equilibrium. But it takes less than 5,000 miles to get to this point. And look what he's got by then. He's got a combustion chamber much smaller than we meant it to be when the car left the factory. It may now require premium or even higher octane quality gasoline for the engine to deliver full new car power. What can he do? Well, he can retard the engine timing to lower the octane requirement. That means he'll be getting less power from his engine than he paid for. Or he can start buying higher octane gasoline. But don't forget, many new engines are originally designed to use the highest octane premium gasoline available. In these engines, the deposit buildup could reach the point where it's almost impossible to find the fuel that will satisfy it. And that's only one of his troubles. The heat of normal combustion can get these deposits glowing like live coals. When the fuel-air mixture comes into the cylinder, there's no waiting for the spark plug to fire. The glowing deposit ignites it, and bang, you've got pre-ignition. Instead of burning evenly, the fuel-air mixture explodes downward while the piston is still coming up. Now that's worse than a hammer hitting the top of a piston every time. Side of the coin. Millions of dollars in oil company research have gone into trying to find the ideal motor fuel, one that will keep engines operating all of their lives with the same high performances when they leave the factory. Sure, it's a tough problem. But 
nothing has stumped engineering or chemical research yet. So we have been sure that someday, somewhere, the deposit buildup problem would be solved. I'd like to talk a little bit about finding the ideal automobile fuel. Here in Sinclair's research laboratories at Harvey, we're continually sampling, testing, and analyzing different brands and grades of gasoline. Of course, not one of them is just gasoline. There's no such thing anymore as straight gasoline sold for automobile use. And if there were, it wouldn't be a very good fuel. Today's gasolines are all blends of different kinds of petroleum hydrocarbons. And most of them also contain different chemical additives that are not petroleum products at all. These additives are added to the gasoline to do jobs that no gasoline or blend of gasolines can do by itself. Compounds to keep carburetors and fuel lines from icing. Oxidation inhibitors. Metal deactivators. Upper cylinder lubricants. Many oil companies have followed the lead of Sinclair's RD-119 and introduced rust inhibitors. And, of course, most of them contain tetraethyl lead. In recent years, some oil companies have been trying additives to solve the old familiar bugaboo of combustion chamber deposits. Now, these additives, usually materials such as tricresophosphate, have resulted in alleviating some of the problems. Unfortunately, they have aggravated others. The major problems caused by combustion chamber deposit buildup are three in number. First, increased octane demand of the engine, and if the fuel cannot satisfy this demand, knock. Second, the glowing of the heated deposits causing pre-ignition. Sometimes this is heard as wild ping, but it can just as easily not be heard even if you can't hear a knock, you can still be getting pre-ignition with resulting loss of power and possible engine damage. Third, spark plug fouling and the resultant short circuiting. The phosphate additives on the market today attack two of these problems and do help somewhat. By reducing glowing, the danger of pre-ignition is in some degree lessened. The problem of higher octane demand remains. Indeed, phosphate additive gasolines result in increased deposits, thus increasing octane demand. There's another possible answer, that of marketing special grades of higher octane fuels. This might solve the knocking problem, but at a greatly increased cost to the car owner. It would only partially reduce pre-ignition. It would offer no help at all with spark plug fouling. In Sinclair's search for the answer to the problem of deposit buildup, it was decided to tackle these problems at their source, the deposits themselves. And after an extensive program on fuel additive research, after years of tests in the laboratory and on the road, covering many types of engines and utilizing much special equipment, Sinclair has found an answer. New X-Chemical. X-Chemical tackles the problem at the source by actually chemically changing the deposits themselves. More than just another additive, New X-Chemical is a special chemical compound which not only reduces pre-ignition and spark plug fouling, but does something no other additive in use today can do. It actually lowers octane requirements due to deposit formation in the combustion chamber of an engine.